<laughs> I've always been me, baby. And I think more people need to be like that. Who, 10 years ago? Child, 10 years ago, I would say the possibilities for women like myself were hard and strenuous. The only things that we would possibly get were guest star roles as stereotypically the street deviants. But when the success of acting specifically for film and television came along, it was a shoot to the stars. And I'm glad I could be shifting it. I'm glad I can be a powerful shift in the narrative that we're living today. I like to think of myself as a person who has full autonomy, but I still always feel unsafe because I am a trans woman and I'm always worried about my life, period. Like we need protection. But we clearly, with the deaths of so many women like myself, we clearly don't have no protection. The animosity towards us is that we already have this knowing of self, and a lot of people have not yet been able to do that. And that's no shade to them. We're just challenging them to open up a little bit more. In order for you to do that, you have to understand my plight, or at least try to. For me, I'll speak for myself, it's very hard for the ones who are displaced, because a lot are displaced once they let people who they love know. And the advice I would give them is venture out and find people that do love you and will not judge you, because that's the only thing that you can do to really survive in this world. You still have a safe haven to go to. The pride flag represents every single person. It literally is a reflection of diversity. But most importantly, the reason why I think LGBTQAI members find solace in the liberation is because we're the ones who created our own liberation. That's what people don't see what is beyond the rainbow, but it's there. That is the pot of gold. <laughs>